Oh. Yeah. They're about nine months old, but this one, I think it's trying to God, go. this is just like Big Brother to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'd stay in there if I were with you. It's minus five <laughs> minus there. Minus five. Oh, poor little beavers. Poor little beavers. Come Stay on. Nina? Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, oh. little beavers. <laughs> we're going to be talking to Chris Packer, Michaela Strachan and uh, Martin Hughes Games later on in the show. Minus five, eh? Minus it's a bit warmer here. Anyway, uh, now two things that you need to know about this next film. Firstly, Al, yeah. the hippocampus is located in the medial temporal lobe of the brain. Clearly. Yeah. And secondly, apparently, taxi drivers have enlarged ones. Michael oh. Mosley reveals why we should all hail the modest cabbie. Look around you on a typical high street. How can you spot people with bigger brains than yours? Here in London, they are easier to find than you might imagine. All you have to do is stick your hand out and hail one. London cabbies famously have fantastic memories. In order to pass the test, the knowledge, they need to know the location of all of London streets, which are around 25,000. And even more impressively, they have to know the shortest distance between any two points. Researchers believe that cabbies are no more naturally gifted than you or me. So does their remarkable ability to memorise London streets make them geniuses? OK, King's Cross Station to Hyde Park Corner. Um, Euston Road, cuts through Grafton Way, left Fitzroy Street, forward Charlotte Street. Right, right into Piccadilly uh, and up to Hyde Park Corner. It seems these feats of recall improve spatial memory. In fact, tests show part of a cabbie's brain, the hippocampus, is on average noticeably bigger than normal. I've come to London Hammersmith Hospital where our cabbie Paul has agreed to have a brain scan. He's under the supervision of clinical psychologist Dr Jenny Wilde. So what is the physical evidence that cab drivers have different brains to the rest of us? University College London conducted a groundbreaking, very novel study where they looked at the size of the hippocampus in London taxi drivers and they compared that to um, people who weren't taxi drivers, men who weren't taxi drivers. And they found that the taxi drivers had a significantly larger hippocampus, significantly larger memory center in their brains, which led them to conclude that being able to navigate very well and learning the knowledge through London led to a larger hippocampus. The longer you had been a taxi driver, the larger your hippocampus. So what's happening at the moment is that Paul is in the machine over there and they're scanning his brain to measure if his hippocampus is larger than average and see if all that training has made any difference or not. Having a larger hippocampus can increase a person's ability to navigate and recall spatial locations. Looking at this 3D image of Paul's brain, we can see the hippocampus shown in green is 28% larger than in an average man. To see what difference this makes beyond their taxi cabs, we're going to conduct a one-show experiment here at the maze at Leeds Castle in Kent. On one team, Paul and fellow cabbies John and Adam. And on my team, I have a couple of really smart cookies. Two senior lecturers from Canterbury Christchurch University. We're confident. Around the maze, we've positioned portraits of five famous geniuses. Both teams will have 30 minutes to navigate the maze, search for portraits and memorise their locations. Then, one by one, they'll be asked to go from Beethoven to Hawking, to Newton, to Socrates and finally Einstein, in the right order. The quickest route should take just 13 turns, but that means getting everything right first time. The lecturers seem confident, but what about the cabbies? With the 30 minutes up, it's now their chance to beat the clock. If, like him, Paul's fellow cabbies each have a larger than average hippocampus, then in theory they should beat my team hands down. OK, gentlemen, I have a result, and it's very clear-cut result, I have to say. The fastest by a long way was Adam. <coughs> the slowest by a long way was me. 
all the other competitors took roughly four minutes each. Our admittedly unscientific test does appear to show that paper qualifications aren't enough to get around the maze, and that when it comes to finding your way from place to place, the cabbie's brains come out on top. So, Michael, did you actually find your way to the studio okay tonight? <laughs> I, I have been here before. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, you were supposed to be on at the start of the programme, but through the film, you turned up way behind everybody yeah. else. Anyway, uh, earlier in the week, we saw that Radio Times have featured the uh, top 50 of Britain's greatest inventions, and in your new series, you get a, a chance to express your favourite. Absolutely. I mean, I absolutely love inventions and I love inventors. And yeah. I think that we're in difficult times and what we really need to do is recapture that spirit of 100, mm. 200 years ago when people just went out and they invented stuff and they made stuff and they sold it to the world. Come on then, Michael, what was it? What was your favourite? My favourite was uh, Richard Trevithick and the um, steam car, the first one which went off down the road before the Battle of Trafalgar. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. that long ago. Isn't that fascinating? I love that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, here he is, going full steam ahead, look. An inventor driven by...